if you ever opened up your washer and found that white shirt that you put in came out pink or opened up your dryer found your best jeans were covered in lint or tangled so badly that you needed to iron them hi it's steve from parts select in this video we'll share some basic ideas and tips so that you don't end up with a laundry room disaster now our first step will be to sort the laundry an item like this would fit into our colors pile Anything from navy blues, blacks, grays, that's something we would call a dark color. Typically we're going to have some white items as well, and we obviously don't want to mix those two together. If you launder a white item with a colored item, there's a pretty good chance you're going to get some dye transfer, and eventually those nice white towels will become gray. Now here we need to pay a little more attention. Typically items that are red in color will transfer dye really easily and these should always be washed separately at least for the first few times until the dye is stable. And then items like this, large blankets, will treat separately all together. Now that we've sorted all of our items by color, our next step will be to verify that the fabrics are compatible with each other. To do so we simply need to look at the garment label. We see that it's a cotton and nylon or synthetic blend. We do see that it asks to turn the item inside out. And if we look at all of the symbols, we'll see that we want to wash that in cold water, no bleach, tumble dry at low heat, and iron on a cool setting if required, and not to dry clean. Now we'll just work our way through this pile of colored items to verify that they are compatible with each other. During this process, you may have noticed that some of these labels don't have written instructions and they only have symbols. These symbols are typically universal in nature and are easily available online for interpretation. Now before we load the washer, the next thing we'll want to do is verify that we've emptied all of our pockets. Items such as keys, screws, nails can cause some damage to your washer and something as simple as tissues. These will create a lot of lint and makes it really difficult to clean off. Now next is the loading procedure. Depending on whether you're using a front load style of washer or a top load style of washer, they may be slightly different. With a front load washer, we simply need to take the items, just clump them in a ball, and toss them in. For front load washers, most of the time the tubs are larger than a top load washer, and they are a little more difficult to overload. Normally there is some space above the opening to allow for a little bit of expansion and tumbling action in here. So whenever possible, try to pick a moderate to larger size load for your front load washer. Now that we have our washer loaded, the next step will be to choose what additive we're going to use and then the proper cycle for the load that we've chosen. So we've looked at the fabric care labels and we've determined that a cold water wash is probably the best for this particular cycle. So we've picked a detergent that works well in cold water. Now we want to add that to the compartment that is labeled detergent. Pretty much all front load washers will have either an open type detergent compartment on the top or a pull open drawer on the front. Those that don't, you would simply add that detergent to the inner drum before you close the door up. The amount that you use becomes very critical. Most people tend to use far too much detergent in their front load washer. And what does that do? It creates a lot of suds. Now you would think more suds gives you a better wash. That's not actually the case particularly in a front load washer, excess suds actually provides a cushion for clothes to drop on and therefore they don't become quite as clean. Now that we've added our detergent and our fabric softener, we're ready to start to wash. So we need to pick a cycle that best suits the load that we have in our washer. In this particular case, we have mostly cottons, so we'll pick a normal or cotton cycle. We'll want to verify the wash water temperature in this case, we're going to go with a cold water wash. They're a lightly soiled item, so we'll stay with the standard cycle. If it was a heavily soiled item, you'll want to add some extra time, or you may wish to add a pre-soak if you have some items that are stained and you want those to soak for a bit before the wash cycle begins. Once we've done all that, we simply can start the cycle and walk away. Now the loading procedure for a top load washer is slightly different from a front load washer. What we have to take into consideration is the agitator in the center of the tub. What we want to do is refrain from 
wrapping things around the agitator. What happens when we do that is they will tend to become tangled and it often creates excess abrasion on the fabric and will cause damage to it. Now with a top load washer, similar to a front load washer, we need to first of all select our water temperature. Based on the fabric labels of the load that we have in there, we're going to pick a cool or cold cycle. The standard single rinse is probably enough for this load. Now next we need to select the water level for our top load washer. Unlike most front load washers that do that automatically, top load washers, you need to select that option. We suggest that you pick the water level that most closely matches the load size that you have in the washer or the next largest. The more water you have in a top load washer, the more easily clothes can circulate inside the tub and therefore the cleaner they will come. Next, we'll choose the cycle that best selects the fabric. In this case, we're going to choose a regular cycle. Once we've done that, we simply need to hit the start button and our wash will begin. Now that our washer load is finished, we're ready to start the dryer. First thing we we'll want to make sure of is that the items coming from the washer into the dryer are okay to go in the dryer. Again, we'll check our laundry labels and verify that they are safe to use in the dryer. Secondly, we want to make sure that we have the proper size load for our dryer. For clothes to dry properly, they need to be able to tumble freely inside of the dryer drum. If you overload your dryer, what typically happens is some items will get caught up in a bundle and won't dry completely. In some cases, you may need to split the load up coming out of your washer to get your best drying results. Once we've selected the proper load size, our next step is to make sure that the lint filter is clean. We find it a good practice to check the lint filter before you start your dryer load and clean it at the end of each cycle. Now before we close up our dryer, you need to make a decision whether or not you want to use a fabric sheet in the dryer. You may also wish to add some dryer balls. These are typically a felt or wool type material. And what that does is it opens up the clothing as it's tumbling in your dryer. Although they're a bit noisy, they do allow for better airflow and therefore are more efficient dry by using them. What we do recommend with your clothes dryer is wherever possible use an automatic cycle if your machine has one. A sensor dryer or automatic dry cycle is more tailored to the load that is in your dryer and tends to not over dry your items. We're going to pick a sensor dry cycle on this particular model. We'll choose our temperature. Our garment labels indicated that it is a low temperature. The time is estimated only because it is a sensor dry, it will dry according to the load size. If we want to choose the permanent press or wrinkle prevent option, we can select that. All that remains is to start the cycle. Now once our dryer is stopped, we suggest that you remove all of those items as soon as possible. The longer you leave them in the dryer, the more chance you have of wrinkles setting into those items. Now that our cycle is complete, let's review some of the do's and don'ts so that you get the best results from your laundry day. If you pay attention to the instructions on your garment label, make sure your load size is proper for the machine, select the proper cycles for both your washer and your dryer, you should get great results from your laundry day. Thank you so much for watching this video. We certainly hope that some of these tips will help you from damaging your clothing or your laundry equipment. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a thing.